Hello and welcome back to the Mojave everybody, welcome back to New Vegas where today we're going to be taking a look at the Arc Welder, a very strange weapon that's in New Vegas, this gets added with the Lonesome Road DLC, the final DLC or quote unquote final, you can do it at any point, but it is more the, the official ending of the DLCs. And this is a strange weapon that the marked men can be having. They don't always carry this around, but sometimes they do. And it's usually not that scary if a marked man has this as opposed to some of the other weapons that they can carry, especially later on to the game where they can be carrying like brush guns and 50 cals and marksman's rifles and stuff like that. The arc welder is not that big of a deal to deal with them then. So the arc welder requires 75 energy weapons to wield and seven strength. It is a heavy weapon which makes it kind of awkward for an energy weapon build, unless you're going with a heavy weapons energy weapon build, which you're probably going to be shooting for something like the Gatling Laser or Tesla Cannon, which are both, I would say, better options than the Arc Welder. But the Arc Welder is an early game option that you can get because you can go to and from the Lonesome Road whenever you'd like. And there is some Arc Welders right at the very start of the Lonesome Road where you don't even need to fight anything. You can just go there, pick them up, and then run out if you would like. And they're actually worth a lot of money too. The Arc Welder does nine damage per hit, which is fairly low, but this is kind of a full auto weapon, sort of, full auto energy weapon. This does 72 damage per second, so okay damage per second. This does one crit damage, which is not very good at all. This has a low crit chance too at 0.36 times, which is more than a lot of other full auto weapons, but when your full auto damage is one extra crit damage, or two if you're getting sneak crits, that doesn't really matter all that much. It's It doesn't really factor into this. Then this costs 30 action points, which is kind of high. It's not really one of the best to be using in VATS, especially for energy weapons that have a lot of really good VATS weapons. This weighs 15 weight, so it is heavy. This has 250 item HP, which is uh, okay. Uh, it doesn't break too fast because you can't shoot it super fast. I don't think I've ever actually broken the arc welder before using it, but I don't use it all that much. This also has 0.5 spread, which is kind of weird because it's a beam. So it's similar to like the flamethrower where the spread doesn't really matter. And I think more spread would be better for a weapon like this since it has limited range and kind of a cone that it tries to zap things. This also has a magazine size of 30. This also uses the electronic charge pack, which is the same ammo that the laser RCW and the Gatling laser use, as well as the Tesla cannon. I always forget that this weapon also uses that ammo. This also has a unique effect on it as well, where it does an additional eight damage towards robots and an additional four damage towards power armor which can actually be kind of useful. That's like the main selling point of the Arc Welder is if you want to grab it early and you want to take it to a place like Old World Blues that has a lot of robots. For the general pros of the Arc Welder, you can get this early on, which is really cool because you can go to the Lonesome Road and immediately hop out and you don't even need to fight anything. And it does do good robot damage, but there's not a whole lot of robots in New Vegas besides Old World Blues, which is why you may want to grab this early if you plan on going there early. For the cons of this though, is that it does low damage it's heavy, it, it's kind of awkward to carry around. It's not really the best for the ammo either. The ammo can be a little bit difficult to find. Electronic charge packs, I would say, are the more difficult of like energy weapon cells, I guess, besides like alien blaster cells. So you might not be able to get a whole lot of these very early on. And that can be kind of a pain for this. There are a couple perks that can help out with the arc welder too. Meltdown helps with this, so you can potentially kill more enemies. You can have them explode, which deals damage. That's pretty good on any energy weapon, as long as you can stay out of the range of it. It doesn't help that the arc welder has limited range, so that's not good either. And heavyweight can cut this in half, going down to seven and a half weight, which makes it more manageable. For the ammos, we have the standard ECP rounds, so the electronic charge packs. These have regular damage, but they punch through two armor, just like all the energy cells do, so that's really cool. You've got the bulk cells, which do less damage to your gun, but they also do less damage to the enemies, which is kind of a decent trade-off. You can buy a lot of these early on, and that's what I would probably be shooting for if you want to take this to Old World Blues really quick, because you can get a, at least a couple of those if you go to the, the right places, you go to the right the right vendors. We have the overcharge cells too. These give you 25% more damage, punch through five armor, break your weapon 50% quicker. They can be fine on the arc welder. You have the max cells. They do the most amount of damage, punch through 10 armor, but break your weapon two and a half times faster. Probably don't want to be using these in the arc welder. I feel like you can get a lot more value if you put those in the laser RCW or if you put them in the Gatling laser or the Tesla cannon. Any of those are better options than the arc welder. And then you also have the optimized cells, which I generally consider the best. These give you 30% more damage, punch through five armor, and break your weapon only 10% faster. You do need to have the Vigilant Recycler perk in order to get these, though. So you have to make them yourself. For an overall rating on my tier list, I would probably put the Arc Welder either into D or F tier. 
I honestly don't think it's that great of a weapon, unless you're going to get it really early on and run to Old World Blues and take out the robots really quickly. In which case, then it can actually be pretty decent. Which is kind of a shame because it is in the Lonesome Road, but there's like no robots in the Lonesome Road, besides Ulysses' iBots at the very end of the game. Outside of that, there's like no Protectrons, no Gutsy Bots, no Securitrons, no... no anything. There's just nothing there that can actually kind of take advantage of the Arc Welder, unless I guess you were going to go there and only use energy weapons, in which case then you've probably brought the weakest build to the Divide, because you get that and the Flare Gun, and that's it, I think, for unique weapons that actually are there. Unless, of course, you're just picking up things the Marked Men can have, because then they can also have, like, Tri-Beam lasers, in which case then you're perfectly fine. Tell me your thoughts on the Arc Welder down in the comments below. How do you guys enjoy using it? Do you like to use it? Do you use it at all? And thank you guys so very much for watching this. Hope that you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.